Hey, what's up guys? This is episode 32 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fallout New Vegas. In today's episode, we're taking another deep dive into Quarry Junction's cut content. To begin, there's an unused note that outlines the basis of a cut NCR quest. It reads, You've discovered that Jack Wilson is the civilian contractor responsible for running the operations at Quarry Junction in Boulder City. While it would make sense for the NCR to simply reuse the rubble lying around Boulder City, it seems that a report from the Office of Science and Industry has deemed the rubble unusable. A fortunate turn of events for Jack Wilson. Ike, the bartender at the Bighorn Saloon in Boulder City, informed you that Wilson frequents Gamora, one of the casinos along the Strip in New Vegas. The only other remnant of this quest is a variable in the Quarry Junction quest script, and it tracked if Ike had told the player about the concrete. This implies that he was likely the quest-giving NPC. Despite there being so little left over from the quest, we can still infer a bit about its premise. After talking to Ike and tracking down Jack Wilson at the Gamora, it seems you either had to convince him or someone at the Office of Science and Industry to reuse the rubble at Boulder City. Presumably, this would have sped up the construction and lowered the building cost. The real question comes down to why they weren't doing this in the first place. Perhaps Jack Wilson was running a scam with a corrupt OSI official. Dr. Thomas Hildern is the OSI East Director of Operations, and he isn't the most scrupulous of characters, as shown in the quest, There Stands the Grass. On the other hand, it might have simply been another example of the NCR's inefficient bureaucracy. After completing this quest, there would be no reason for the player to clear out Death Claws at Quarry Junction, or for the NCR to continue their mining operations there. Perhaps Sloan would have been abandoned, with Chomps and the other workers being relocated to Boulder City. The concrete is being used to construct fortifications to fend off the Legion's impending attack, and there might have even been plans for reactivity. Perhaps the rubble around Boulder City would be cleared, and the NCR's defenses would be reinforced. Area designer Jorge Salgado noted that more was planned for Boulder City, but that its scope was limited due to its proximity to Hoover Dam. Perhaps that's why this quest was eventually cut. During the unmarked quest, you gotta break a few eggs, Joss Wilkins asked the courier to bring her a Deathclaw egg. Her dialogue mentioned she's leaving for New Vegas, but she never actually leaves Sloan. However, an unused variable reveals she was meant to depart once the player completed her quest. She never would have actually appeared in New Vegas, though. Once an NPC is no longer needed, they're often disabled in order to manage resources. In some cases, they're outright scripted to die. For instance, during the quest Beyond the Beef, Chauncey dies even if you manage to kill his assassin. In a similar fashion, Joss would have been disabled after leaving town. The quest, Don't Make a Beggar of Me, has several unused variables. For the sake of comparison, the final quest follows this path. The courier travels to Quarry Junction and meets Melissa, one of the Great Cons. She sends the player to Sloan to retrieve a delivery of chems. After arriving in town, it's revealed that the shipment is missing. Chomps Lewis informs you that the shipment never arrived, and then directs you to Tyrone, an NCR soldier in Prem who sells chems on the side. From here, the player has a few different options to get the chems from Tyrone before delivering them to Melissa. 
Alternatively, you can expose both Tyrone and Chomps Lewis to Lieutenant Hayes of the NCR. Here's how the quest might have differed. First, there's an unused variable for Chomps Lewis to join the player. Perhaps he was going to tag along to the meeting with Tyrone. A note in his inventory reads, Tyrone, you cheating bastard. Those supplies were paid up in full. You can't just raise the price all of a sudden. I can't afford the price, and besides, what am I going to tell Melissa? When you get this note, come to Sloan. We need to talk. Perhaps this player-initiated negotiation originally took place between Chomps and Tyrone. He also mentions that Melissa is his daughter, so it's possible he would have gone with you to meet the Great Cons afterwards. I've talked about this before, but an early version of Papa Khan was going to appear here. It's likely that he was somehow involved with this quest, as there is seemingly no other reason for him to be in the area. Unless of course he was somehow involved in the Powder Ganger raid that we talked about in part 1, but there's no evidence to support that theory. Next, Tyrone has an unused dialogue topic about buying chems. It's likely that if the player didn't expose Tyrone to the NCR or pickpocket the chems, he'd be unlocked as a vendor. In the final game, he's disabled after this quest is finished. Melissa also has an empty dialogue topic that suggests you would have had to negotiate a better deal with Tyrone. It's hard to say how this was going to play out originally, but Don't Make a Beggar of Me was clearly intended to be more intricate. These additions had the potential to make Quarry Junction memorable for more than getting murdered by Deathclaws. Unfortunately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.